I will not cease to be impressed and have a level of pride that genuinely warms my soul with Colby Covington. Like, that's not going to end any time soon. It brings me a true joy, but there's times that I feel maybe you're not seeing what's happening. And therefore, Colby isn't getting the credit that he deserves. Time is going to reflect very fondly on Colby. There's a couple of things that Colby has revolutionized within our sport. When he's retired and done, I will point out for those of you that are missing it what those are. But he is very clearly one of those guys that you can have whatever energy and passion towards him that you want. When he's gone, you're going to miss him. I will maintain for you the greatest line in the history of MMA when it comes to trash talk. And no, contrary to what you might believe, it's not telling somebody they absolutely suck. It's not even telling somebody that their old lady is the only one to make money using their mouth. The greatest line ever I maintain for you is when Conor McGregor simply said into some, it was like an iPhone. I mean, which this behind the scenes camera referencing Dustin Poirier, Poirier for their very first fight. And Conor called him a simple little hillbilly from a circus town. And I maintain for you that is the greatest trash talk line in the history of our sport. Nobody heard it. You got you guys missed it. It didn't go anywhere. And Connor kind of just mentioned it, it, like even within the piece of the very interview that Connor was doing, it was not the line that stood out. But it was great. I go in that vein as a way of building a bridge to today's lesson. Okay, because Colby has pulled, Colby's outdone himself. Colby has now publicly through the media refused, is that the right word? Rejected, turned down a fight with Ian Gary. He will not fight Ian Gary because, this is Colby speaking, He's not going to go backwards in the rankings. He needs to fight somebody that goes forward. Now, the level of brilliance of this move, okay, it was Colby's idea. Colby got a yacht and his own camera crew. You guys saw the piece. The UFC did not pay for that. They did not produce that. They did not send the guys out. There was a lot of steps involved. Colby did them all. He made this on his own. He got Gary all kinds of worked up, right? I mean, if you go challenge somebody, the only thing you're looking for is a response. Now, if you really get a grand slam, like you don't have to get the fight. You just have to get a response. If you get a response in the affirmative home run, if you get a, a response in the affirmative and the promotion actually puts bout agreements and gives you the fight, I mean, you're talking about a grand slam. These things don't happen. This is a, this is a golden unicorn. So. Colby got his response, and it was passionate. Ian Gary, I will tell you, in all fairness, he represented and he stood, he stood up like a man. He absolutely did. And now Colby has said that he will not be fighting him. He will not be going backwards, which, 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 which in a way is reminding everybody, without the fight ever happening, Colby is reminding the world where they both stand. Like, before you get down and get excited and start thinking about this fight and arguing with your buddies who's going to win, you can't be one of those guys and be one of the masses of you that respects the rankings if you're not going to turn to the rankings. So without throwing a single punch, Colby has at least planted the seed that he is better than Gary, would beat Gary. As a matter of fact, look right here, I'm ranked in front of Gary. As a matter of fact, I went and looked at those rankings. Colby's ranked number four, which is another piece of the brilliance. How do you fight somebody in front of you? There is nobody in front of you. I mean, four is a pretty damn good ranking. People are always talking about the, the top 10, and somehow we've even moved it to 15. And then you get other sports that run a real scam, like, like NCAA football. It's top 25. 
You could be the number 25 team in the country. Your coach is getting a bonus. I would be embarrassed. If I'm number 25, please just don't tell anybody. Like, let's, let's just all understand amongst ourselves as gentlemen, I suck. But please don't actually put the number 25 by my name and post that in Sports Illustrated. They do it in football. So as, as much as you want to do that, if you go back and look, with one exception of Sean Strickland, nobody in the last decade outside of the top five has fought for a title. Sean was number six when he went in against Izzy. I mean, how, how do you like that? It's, it's very interesting. Everyone's talking about the top ten. Well, there's not really a top ten. There's a top five, and then there's six through ten, but, but they're treated differently. They're put into different categories. They're different classes. So when I tell you there's nobody in front of Kobe, he's four. On any given day, he can go and fight for a title. Now, speaking of, he's already done that. In fact, it was his last fight. So now you got to take that guy out. Now there's only two guys in front of him. Right? I mean, it's, it, it's a wildly interesting thing. And it was one of, see, I don't like the word troll. And I've, I've never known if a troll is a compliment. I got called a troll on the underground. In fact, Kirik pulled me one time. What a great troll I was. And I was insulted. I thanked him and I smiled, but I was insulted. I just thought a troll was bad. When I was growing up, there was some story about trolls. And trolls were these ogre-type characters, and they were under a bridge. And you went over the bridge, and then the, the trolls would do something. They were, I, I, didn't, I never liked troll. And there was always something about green. There was always something about a wart on the face. So is a troll good? Because I don't want to call I don't want to call Colby a troll unless a troll is good. Like this is entertainment at its finest. What do you do if you're Gary? I mean, how do you start to to, to maneuver and navigate that? Particularly if you're somebody like Gary that respects the rankings. I mean, when Gary got ranked number fifteen, he wouldn't put a tattoo on himself. I mean, th those rankings mean something to Gary. So if you're one of the guys that observes the rankings and you respect them, you can't then dismiss the victory. That Covington just claimed. <laughs> I mean, are you with me? Are you guys, are you with me on this? It's like when Connor sat down a simple little hillbilly from a circus town talking about his pinning opponent from Lafayette, Louisiana. Daniel Cormier even called Connor on that. On a TV show called UFC Tonight. Because Daniel is also from Lafayette. And Connor said, as for you, DC, I call you a ghetto hillbilly. Like, no apologies, and he went with it. I'm telling you, this is one of the great lines. But this is one of the great moves what Colby has pulled here. He went to the effort. He went to the work. He got the yacht. He brought in the camera crews. He edited. He put it out. His audio synced up. These things are hard to do. He did them all to get a fight with Gary, which at least through the media has been accepted. And Colby turned it down. And he turned it down while letting the audience know who would win, therefore the fight is not necessary. This is excellent work. And I don't want any of you to miss this because this level of entertainment and the level of mind that you're dealing with here, while quite possibly diabolical, it is still top of the game in MMA.